Now today is the full moon day in Savana or August and it's just one month since the Lord Buddha taught the Dhamma Chakra Bhavatana Sutta. We saw at the end of the Dhamma Chakra that Anyasi Kondanya became the first person to attain to stream entry in this sasana. So today I'm going to tell you how that came about. Now, it didn't just so happen that Anyasi Kondanya was at that teaching and it didn't, it wasn't just like a lucky thing that he understood first. The story goes back a long, long time. All the way back to Buddha Padamuta, who is the second from the end. That was a hundred thousand aeons ago, or a hundred thousand big bangs previously, that uh, Buddha Padam Uttara arose in the world. Now, at that time, then Buddha Padam Uttara at one point identified various disciples for having various qualities. And one of those disciples was identified as being the person who had first understood the teaching in Buddha Padamutra's Sasana. So, the person who would become later Kondanya was also born at that time. And he heard about this monk who had become the first to uh, understand the Buddha's teaching. And he made an aspiration to become like that monk, but in our Buddha's time, a long time later. So, first of all, he gave a dana. It was a dana to Buddha Padamutara and his seven, uh, hundred thousand monks who were his disciples. And he gave that dana not just once, but he gave it for seven days in a row. And he fed the Buddha and a hundred thousand disciples for seven days. At the end of it, he uh, told the Buddha that he aspired to be the first person to understand the Buddha's teaching in a future sasana. And Buddha Padamutara could understand the past as far back as it goes and the future as far forward as it goes and he looked and inquired with his Buddha knowledge and he understood that Kondanya, the person that would become Kondanya, would uh, gain that position at the time of Buddha Gautama. So he confirmed it in that uh, aspiration. Then, over a long period of time, Kondanya was being reborn in the human world and in the daily world and continued doing good works during all those times. There are stories of his lives during other Buddha times, but I can skip those just for the sake of getting to the important part, which is in our Buddha Gotama's time, then Kondanya was born in a wealthy Brahmin family in ancient India and he was given the name Kondanya. He grew up and he learned the Vedas, uh, which was the traditional teaching of India at that time, and he also learned the marks of a great man. So, at more or less the same time, or just some time afterwards, then the uh, Bodhisattva Siddhartha 
was born to King Suddhodana and Maya Maya. And then they came to the name day, then it's traditional to bring in the Brahmins to be giving the name to the boy. So they decided that the name would be Siddhartha, which means one who has uh, accomplished everything he set out to do. And they, they asked eight Brahmins, of whom Kondanya was the youngest, what would become of this boy? And seven of the Brahmins, they raised two fingers and they said, if he stays in the household life, he will become a universal monarch reigning over the whole of India. And if he goes forth, he will become a Buddha. But Kondanya, who was the youngest, when it came to his turn, he just raised one finger and he said, no, this boy will certainly go forth and he will become the Buddha. So after this time, then the Brahmins went back and they told their children that a Buddha will arise in the world sometime in the future when this boy has grown up, you see. They told their sons about this and they said, if you hear that a Buddha has arisen in the world, then you should go forth and follow him and listen to his teachings. So sometime later, when he was 27, then the Buddha, I mean the Bodhisattva, went forth from the city of Kapilavattu. <coughs> and the young men heard about it. But some of these young men, they didn't want to go forth. Only four of them went forth. And the only one from the Brahmins, the eight Brahmins who was still alive was Kondanya. So Kondanya and these four sons of the other Brahmins, they went out and followed Siddhartha as he engaged in his austere striving for six years. Now before he had attained Buddhahood, he started, he would have been taking uh, less and less food and he had become really thin and gaunt. But uh, before he attained Buddhahood, he decided this was not the way to Buddhahood. So he took some food. When he took the food, then the uh, group of five, including Kondanya, left him, thinking that he had given up the struggle. And they went to Isipatana, the deer park in Isipatana. Now when the Buddha awoke, which was only a few days after that event, then he spent seven weeks at the Bodhi tree and afterwards he went to teach the Dhamma Chakra Bhavatana Sutta in Isipatana. Yeah. And after the teaching of that Sutta, then Kondanya gained stream entry and he became the first person in this sasana to attain and realize and follow the Buddha's teaching. Now five days later the Buddha taught the Anatta Lakana Sutta and then all five of them became Arahats. The story doesn't finish there because Anya Kondanya was inclined to seclusion. So after they had finished the range retreat, then he asked permission from the Buddha and he went to the forest. It's actually the Chidanta uh, forest and he lived there in seclusion by himself. So much was he in seclusion that it said that 8,000 elephants were 
the people were the, the ones who looked after him. And the Chidantafaris had lots of fruits, lots of lotus roots and so on. The elephants would pick the fruits and bring them to uh, Kondanya. Now, 12 years later, Anya Kondanya was getting old and he knew he was about to pass away. His Aya Sankara, that means his life force, was running out. So he went to the Buddha and he told the Buddha that uh, he was about to pass away. And then the Buddha asked, where will you pass away? And he said, I'm going to go back to the forest with the elephants and then I will pass away there. So the Buddha uh, uh, allowed it by keeping silence, which is how the Buddha uh, allowed these things to happen. So Kondanyu went back and then he passed away and the elephants discovered him the next morning and then Saka, the lord of the gods, made a big beer. That means what you carry a corpse in for the cremation. He made a huge beer for uh, Kondanya and the elephants carried it around all the way around the Himalayas and eventually the body was brought to the Buddha and the Buddha by his powers he made a stupa but not a little stupa like our stupa but a stupa like a leek high or very high indeed and then Kondanya's body was uh, put you know the remains of his body were put into that stupa. Even in Chuan uh, Sun's time, then that stupa could still be found. But these days, we don't know where it is. Okay? So this is the story of Anya Kondanya. When you read or chant the Dhamma Chakra Pavatana Sutta, you will have more understanding of the people who are in it and what happened to them. But the important thing is that you understand that the aspirations you make now or in the past come to fruition in the future. They don't always come to fruition next week or next month or next year. Kondanya made his first aspiration during the time of Buddha Padmutara a hundred thousand big bangs ago and he became this disciple in the time of Gotama Buddha a hundred thousand aeons later. But the important thing, you don't have to make an aspiration to become a disciple, of course, like that. But the important thing is, aspirations don't come true straight away. You have to work and work and work. And uh, Anu Kandanya met all of these Buddhas yeah, and went through all this period of time doing good works all the way down through that time period yeah. and eventually he had fulfilled his perfection sufficiently to become what was a disciple who was the first to attain in this sasana. So, Bodhisattva, Sadhu.